One of the big ideas that we've been dealing with in this section of the course is superposition. With just a, that's just a sophisticated way of saying, add them up, okay? When I have two pulses that are coming towards each other on a spring or a string or a rope, they don't bounce off of each other like a solid object would. They pass right through each other. And as they pass through each other, what the string or spring or rope looks like is the sum of the two pulses. Now, I acknowledge here publicly that we cannot make a pulse that looks like that with that sharp kink there. We cannot make a pulse that looks like this on a string or a spring or a uh, rope. However, when you're trying to grade one of these problems, and you use real pulses that are all swooshy and kind of smeared out, you don't know whether they've got the right idea or the wrong idea. So I, I apologize to you, but we're going to use these type of idealized pulses just to make it more clear what's going on. Now, once they overlap, I add them up. Now, over here, all I've got is green. And so that's what the spring or string will look like. <coughs> but right here, I, if I call that one unit up, I've got one unit of red up and one unit of green up. And so that's going to give me a total of two up. Now if I look over here, I've got one unit of green and only a half unit of red. And so that's going to give me one and a half units. And then it's all red. Now, if I could have these idealized pulses with the kinks, that's what the string or spring or rope would look like at that moment in time. Okay? That's superposition. And then, as they pass further through each other, we just keep on doing that. Um, now, I would have one unit of red and one unit of green here, so that would be two units. Uh, here I would have just one unit of green, and so that would be one unit, and that's what it would look like. <coughs> and then when they were passing through each other, almost through each other, over here it would be all red, and then here I would have one unit of green and a half unit of red, so that would go up to one and a half. And then right here it becomes all green again. And so it has to come down here and become green. And that's what it would look like. And then they would pass through each other, strangers in the night. <laughs> it's almost Valentine's. <laughs> Just trying to do my part to get you in the mood. Okay? Are there questions on, uh, on superposition? Adam, up. Can you go back a few slides? <laughs> yeah, so like where the red and the green intersect. Uh huh. Why did that point? Why is the point right where they intersect? Shouldn't it be that point? Should that point be higher? That point be one and a half units, or or? It's kind of uh, tricky. If you if you look to the left, just to the left of that tick mark, you just got the red. Mm -hmm. If I look just to the right of that tick mark. I've got some red and twice as much green. And so right at that place, I have to go from just red to both. And that's why I go up to the, the one and a half. But you're right, it happens just to the right of that tape one. Okay? Okay. So you, you see just want us to go like unit by unit. One unit of green, and, and this is still up a half unit there. And then, let's, let's take it right here. I, I've been sloppy. If I do it right here, I've got a quarter unit of red and one unit of green, and that's going to give me one and a quarter there. 
So right here, that would be one and a quarter. And then here I've got zero of red and one of green. So I've got the one. Okay. 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 